Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all having a blessed day. I know a lot of things have taken place and changes going on out there and the public uh, social distancing. Distancing? <laughs> I'll get that out right. But uh, a time to be wise, a time to be smart, but not a time to give up. We need to hang in there and, uh, and hold on tight. We need to support one another, encourage one another, and remind one another that, you know, this will pass. It will pass. We know it's important. We know it's critical. A lot of people reporting about it, the news, uh, every place you turn. And then I started seeing people post on Facebook. You know, they're, they're nervous. They're fearful. They're stressing. They're not used to being kind of shut in, you might say. So it comes to to a time where you need to refocus on some things. Maybe it's a time to renew your relationships with your family. Talk to them, share with them, talk about this situation. Don't hide it, don't cover it up, don't be fearful of it. But we need to face it, and that's the bottom line. Uh, I listened to a uh, podcast this morning where a Dr. Ryan Hodder spoke and made a lot of sense made a lot of sense. This is a serious situation and it's nothing to take lightly uh, for sure. But you know, we can do something about this thing. You know, we really can. We can back off. We can take time. I know financially it's hard on people. But if we look at things as temporary, we can deal with temporary, can't we? We can deal with temporary, uh, even with uncertainties such as today. But I just wanted to share that. You know, God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and of a sound mind. And that's what Ryan reemphasized on the fact in that sound mind part. We've got to be wise. We've got to be smart. We need to heed warnings. This is like when you're driving. If you see a detour sign, what do you do? You don't drive through the detour sign. We would hope not anyhow. You go around. It's inconvenient. It's tough. It makes it a little harder uh, in your travels. But you know what? You get around it. You get through it. And we will. We will get through this. And that all said, I just want to bring up another point and kind of take the focus off of the coronavirus just for a moment. <clears throat> As many of you know, we lost a, a, a nephew here in the last couple of days. He was serving in the Army, uh, getting ready to go into selection for the Special Forces. We were very proud of him. He was very energetic, uh, very athletic, very young. But now he's gone, and yes, we've been heartbroken uh, about this. Uh, we still don't have any information. We're waiting. We loved Jamie. Uh, we have his memories. We will hang on to those things, the smiles, the laughter, the joking, the kidding, and all those kind of things. But, you know, it brought the attention back to our family, and it brought a sense of urgency and to all of us, our son still serves actively in the military, uh, 20 years now. But my daughter brought up some points. You know, what is going on? What are we doing to help our girls uh, and boys in the military? We don't know what they're going through at, at any certain time. Uh, and again, you know, we pray heavily for them when it's an active war time and we want protection around them and we want God's hand to be with them and we want them kept safe. But what do we do when there's downtime? Again, my son made, uh, made an observation. He said, you know, we don't know what everybody's going through. We don't know the stresses, the relationships. Drugs and alcohol are very prevalent uh, in the military, uh, as it's always been. It's always been, but now we uh, see the effects on those kind of things. Suicide rates are up in the military uh, uh, and these types of things. But this is not a time that... Uh, uh, again, we become fearful, but we need to be prayerful. We need to be covering those people who are on the front lines, those who are serving our country in, in all different kinds of uniforms, whether they're police, EMTs, nurses right now with a pandemic going on, and our military young men and women who are serving this country. Most people, if you're like me, you know, sometimes you know, I can deal with it, I can handle it. I can get through this kind of thing. But even myself, I have to talk to people sometimes. And it's hard. And it's hard. You know, I'm a man. I know I'm a pastor. But I'm a man, and we don't easily talk about the situations that we're going through. 
And it's the same thing with our, our, our military people, or even our policemen and, and, and nurses and doctors and all those type of people. You know, sometimes they're in a position, and we put them in a position, that they can handle these things. You know, if they've enlisted in the military, they, they can handle these things. But we don't know what's going on in their life issues, in their families, in their relationships. So, folks, I guess my call today is uh, to be praying, to be covering them, to take time to stop. And, you know, if we do these kind of things, guess what it'll do? It'll distract us from the fear of the things that are surrounding us. And that's a good thing. And that's a good thing because that may that means we're spending more time thinking of the needs of others, especially if our needs have been taken care of. I have no complaints. I have no gripes. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a guy. You know, my, my life goes up and down hills and downs. If, if you know anything about pastoring, you have ups and downs. Uh, and we make it through uh, somehow or another. But there are even pastors out there who are struggling. There are pastors out there who've committed suicide. We need to stop and think about these things. And, and I know we can't stop everything. I know we can't be there for everyone. But you know something? We can pray. We can seek God's face. We can pray protection around them. We can pay wisdom over them. We can pray that our military might see the urgency of, of developing other programs. And, and I know funding is always hard and, and those kind of things. We need our chaplains to step up. We need to pray for them uh, in the things that they're facing. But, you know, bottom line, folks, we need to take time to think of other folks. There are a lot of families that probably have a lot of unanswered questions and are going through tough times, tragic times, loss of a son, loss of a daughter, and those kind of things. And we can pray for them. We can lift them up. This is not a time to cave in. This is not a time to give up. We know a lot of things are going on right now, and a lot of distractions are taking us to places that you know, we, we are uncomfortable in. My goodness, I... I don't like to be shut in. My energy level is so high, man. I'm going to be on the move. I'm going to be out running around. But you know something? Wisdom speaks differently. We've got to be smart. We've got to think of others more highly than ourselves sometimes. We've got to get out of this selfish mode that we're in, and we've got to think of what's going on around and see what's going on around. I didn't even realize the, the problems that were going on in our military, and, and my daughter started pulling up things uh on Google, and I know you just can't always trust Google for everything, but, you know, they were sharing things on Google that, that really brought a lot of concern, uh, a lot of concern and a lot of heartbreak to us, not only because we lost our nephew, and we don't even know what has happened yet. It's still under investigation, so I don't want to imply anything. I don't want to get anybody's thinking that uh, it was some horrible thing. He could have had some physical thing that, that no one knew about that happened, but the bottom line is, there are young men and women who are struggling, who are suffering, who we think have put on a uniform and they can handle it all. Well, you know something? They can't handle it all. Just like you can't handle it all, I can't handle it all. So we've got to pray that people would be willing to step up, that they would humble themselves and step up. It takes the spirit of humility to say, man, I need help. I need help. And folks, we've got a lot of people out there that need help. We have people in the church that won't ask for help, that won't reach out, that won't even ask for prayer. So we've got to think about those things. We've got to think outside the box. We won't know everything. We can't know everything. We're not God. But you know something? God has given us an ability to do one thing, and that's to pray, to seek His face, to come boldly to His throne, to stop for a moment, to humble ourselves. I love... <clears throat> Uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, starting in verse 6, it says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. He wants to lift us up. He wants to build us up. But you know what? Even for believers, we've got to stop and take time and come before Him and ask Him for these things. We've got to be honest with God. I know He knows our heart. He knows our mind. But we've got to talk to Him. He wants us to talk to Him. We need to talk more than what we do. And we, we don't. We don't. We're just a prideful people hung up on, I can fix it, I can handle it. And you know what? We can't on everything. So sometimes it's time to, to, to suck it up and to be humble and say, you know something, I need help. I need some assistance. And it says, casting all your care upon Him because He cares for you. God cares for you. 
He loves you. He died for you. He died so you, you, you could live. And, and I know a lot of people don't understand that and comprehend that. I do. I didn't come from a church life. I didn't come from that background. I was a horrible person. I was a sinner like many people out there, like everybody out there. The Bible says all the sin and fall short of the glory of God. But I was a horrible person. I stole. I was violent. I did crazy things. People didn't want to be around me. People didn't even want to invite me to their homes. My family didn't want me around. That's what drugs and alcohol and things did in my life. But I, the thing I learned is I didn't ask for help. I knew I needed help, but I couldn't ask for help because my pride would not let me do that. But man, when I fell on my face before God and cried out to Him and said, Lord, I can't live in this world without you anymore, it transformed my life. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But I know there's a God that can change you. I know there's a God that's there for you. And I have to go before Him all the time. I'm not arrived. I pastor a church. I'm not arrived. So folks, we need to pray for a humble spirit to rest on all those folks who are on the front line, whether they're in the military, the police department, instead of being so critical and judgmental and condemning because of all the things that are going out, we don't know what people are going through. But you know what? It's time to think about that. You know what you're going through right now. You may have a situation in your life that you're ashamed to talk about, but you need to. You should never be ashamed. There's someone out there who's gone through what you've gone through that needs to hear how you're working through it. When I hear of a, a young woman that's, that's been raped and, and it's taken her 10 years uh, to come out and share that thing because she was so ashamed and, and let down, she felt she did something wrong, I, I think that's sad. They should be able to lift their heads up knowing that it wasn't their fault. They need to be able to know they can come to talk to somebody that they're not going to be condemned or belittled or degraded. And that's the kind of God I serve. That's the kind of God I preach. But we got to be sober. we got to be vigilant. You know, sober means clear-minded. we got to take time to clear that mind out because there's a devil out there seeking who he may devour. And he doesn't want you victorious. He doesn't want you happy. He wants you to think that... You are where you are because you deserve to be where you are. Well, you don't deserve that. You deserve better. So, folks, take some time today. Think outside the box. Think of others a little more highly than you do yourself. When I, <laughs> I got I to gotta share this. And, and you know, uh, I do this even from the pulpit. But I, I went to BJ's today and uh, to get some water. And I go in. I get me a couple cases of water. I got three bags of potato chips. And I'm just... Happy as a, a, a hog in mud, uh, you might say, and I'm just content as can be, and I'm walking out. But I'm looking at all these people with, with two and three roll th cases of toilet paper in their, their carts and, and, and a little bit of necessities in there. Like There might have been some food in some of those carts, and I'm sure there were. But, you know, it just shows the mentality uh, of selfishness and self and I've got to take care of me, and, and there's other people out there that have needs that need to be taken care of. Other people out there that can't get out to go get all this toilet paper, I guess, that people think they need, or whatever they need. But you know, if we stop and start thinking rationally, and start thinking outside the box, and start thinking of others more highly than we do ourselves, my goodness, how different things could be. You know, it's up to us folks to be different. It's up to for us folks to do it differently. You can live with one case of toilet paper. You can live with one case of water. You can. Cut back a little bit. Think of other people. Someone else has needs also. But our military right now, our police, our National Guards people, anybody that's serving, EMTs, anybody serving in front, they see things we don't see that we can't see. We probably don't need to see. And I sit and think about how hard it must be to deal with all those things when they feel they don't have someone to talk to. So folks, take time. Humble yourself. Talk to somebody. Husbands, talk to your wives. Cry with them. Oh my goodness. You know, I, I think that's what men need to do a little bit more is, is sit down and just have a good cry session. We need to do that. Man, that's such a big relief for me. I, I, I do it. Not just freely, but, but I'll sit with my wife sometimes and just share with her that I'm heartbroken over some things. And I weep. I weep. Man, it's such a relief. It's such a relief. 
But pride tells us men that we can't do that. We shouldn't do that. And women, you know, you do the same thing sometimes. Pride's a killer. It keeps us from doing the healthy things, the right things. So folks, my prayer for you today is that you would think about just some of the things I've said. I, you know, I'm not the greatest speaker in the world. I don't write books. I don't, and I'm not condemning other people that do. But you know what? I'm just a little lowly pastor trying to be humble, trying to help other folks, trying to think outside the box just a little bit. And that's my challenge. Uh, thank you for, for giving me this time. I don't know how many people see this or care to see this or care to hear what I have to say. Uh, uh, you might like me. You might not like me. You know, I've learned to live with that, too. You know, not everybody loves, uh, uh, loves you, you know, and such is life. I probably need to love everybody a whole lot more than I do. Uh, but sometimes I struggle there, too. But, folks, here's the deal. I'm just going to be gut level honest with you. Stop being selfish. Stop being prideful. Start thinking that there's someone out there going through far worse things than you ever can imagine. My dad used to tell me uh, when I would complain uh, about wanting new tennis shoes. I wanted to have tennis shoes like everyone else. And uh, my dad used to say, you know, I used to complain about not having any shoes till I saw a man who didn't have any feet. And I just, those little things hang on, I hang on to those things. So folks, stop and take a look around. You might not have it as bad as you think. But if you are going through something today, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Take time. Everyone has that one friend that you can trust that won't spread the, the news to the world that you can share with. Stop and take time. Think about it. Think it through. Think better of yourself even. But think of others. There are others out there that are struggling. There's others out there that need help. There's others out there that need our prayers and our time. Love you guys. Have a blessed rest of the day. This is going to pass. Yes, it's serious. We need to be smart. We need to be wise. And we don't need to be selfish. Think of others today. Just a little bit more. God bless you all. And we'll see you soon.